morning, you guys. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello to all of my subscribers. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Chantel, and I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and Savior. I'm a wife to an amazing husband and a mom of two kids. You guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I have been going through so much lately. I just celebrated a birthday and I am very grateful to God for another year. And have you sort of had the feeling that God is trying to get your attention? I have been so uneasy lately and I know the Lord has been trying to get my attention in some things. I actually prayed for wisdom on some things and I believe he's answered my prayers and I'm just reluctant to accepting the actual answer. So I have been going through some time and I'm just grateful that I can call out to the Lord in times of distress or trouble or needing answers and it's just such a blessing and I just wanted to come on here and today really to share with you guys with all that's going on in the world and the economy we can definitely need some help with our personal finances I've been saving lately and I have also been paying more attention to and being wise with how I am spending my money. I'm not perfect, but I have been making an attempt each and every day. And I just pray that you guys are also doing the same. And I just wanted to share my grandparents' teaching on what they've taught us as kids. There were eight of us um, basically frequenting. I lived with them and um, my grandfather was a cook at the hospital for over 50 years uh, ago, actually, you know, and he retired there. Then he started his own cleaning business afterwards. So I am definitely grateful to have picked up on his way of dealing with food, the budget, and um, purchasing, and also stocking up dry goods, that which you may see in my pantry in the background. I do stock up on dried goods, pastas, beans, peas, and uh, canned goods, as well as a large uh, container of rice, oats, and um, also I will be having a large container of lentils because that is our favorite. We cannot seem to keep a gallon size amount of it. So I will just get a large 25 pound bag of that. Uh, we use Azure Standard and we've been using them for years. Um, since my kids were little, I have always purchased in bulk. I've always purchased either fruit from them are large dried packages and they've been great and we have a drop-off site not too far from us so it's a blessing to have that in place as well as the local farmers we have near us i am going to start gardening this year and it will start in containers small but it's something today i'm so excited to show you guys how i was able to pick up a week's worth of meals and which is groceries for a family of eight on a budget of less than $35. Yes, we are going to be wise with our money just as the Bible instructs us. Proverbs 21.20 says, In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. We are going to start with the first step, which is smart planning. Before heading to the store, it's essential to have a plan. Create a meal plan for the week and stick to it. Shop your home first. Look in your freezer, your fridge, your pantry, see what you already have. And that way we can make use of what the Bible says for Proverbs 24, 27. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. 
This verse reminds us to plan ahead and prioritize. So for our budget meal plan today, we'll focus on simple, nutritious ingredients that will go a long way. Now, I'm from the South, we like rice and beans. I will focus on that. I can make multiple dishes with that. I will try fresh vegetables and some fruit and some protein. That's the goal. The fruit can be expensive, but if you plan properly, you can find something. Today, I'm going to opt for some sort of peas, and my family just loves peas. We like black beans and all the beans, actually, but we really do love the peas. For some reason, they just seem to enjoy it so much more. So I think I'm going to pick up some peas and some rice, and I'm going to go for the non-GMO option. It's a few dollars. It's not that much difference in price, but it's worth it. And I'm just going to pick this up for this week. My goal is to incorporate what I learned, and that is to make this budget stretch as much as possible and to also give my family some nutritious meals in the process. And I just want to make certain that I do that. Now my goal is to actually find breakfast, lunches, and dinner for the week. And prayerfully, I pray that it will spill over into another week. So that is what I'm actually planning. And if everything serves me well that I've learned, and paid attention to coming up i am hoping that i will actually be able to make these meals um, stretch over into the next week or whenever i desire to utilize it I really do think it's important to have a pantry or a few cabinets with just extra items just in case for emergencies or if you get ill and you can't quite make it to the grocer. But I definitely think it is wise to pick up at least one extra item each time you visit the store, either if it's a one extra item of um, beans or peas, one extra item of canned goods, any type of rice or pastas, and just put that in your pantry to just start planning for either bad weather or unseen events. You never know what may come upon us. So it's definitely important to take care of our families and ourselves and just plan ahead. It's very, very important. Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, Invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. My goal is to cook as much as I can in bulk. I want to make good use of what we have. This is about this is all about making the most out of what we have, saving wisely, and stretching our resources. So I would like to use the beans as a base for multiple meals. One pot of beans or peas can create soup, 
burritos, quesadillas, even a side dish. And I would like to incorporate that and hopefully it spills over into the next week. If you make your own bread, biscuits, cookies, quesadillas, flatbreads, pizzas, all of those items on your own, you will save so much money and you will do your digestion justice. You see, you can get all of this flour for under $6, $9. And also, if fresh fresh vegetables are too expensive, you can always opt for the canned. You definitely need your iron. And in places of emergencies and situations where you have to save, hey, nothing is wrong with having canned items. Well, there you go. I have only spent $34.42 in total. That is a blessing. That is it so the first step actually now that we've shopped smartly it's time to get cooking but what i've purchased is i've saved so much as you can see here i've labeled what each item has cost me and it's just really awesome now i'm going to get started with cooking and i'm going to put this casserole to work because that is our my family's staple and we also like boiled eggs, but we do like the casserole. And I sometimes do sunny side up or if I'm doing biscuits or some type of item like that. And you see a sausage I am putting in the casserole. I've shredded some of the potatoes as a base. And I am going to put this in the oven and we are going to have that for most of the week. Also, in addition to that, I had extra sausage so I can make the kids some cheese and sausage quesadillas. Now, we would want to soak our beans. The goal for that is you definitely want the flavor of the beans to, you know, be easier. First of all, soaking breaks down the complex starches and fibers, which can reduce cooking time by 25 to 30 percent. And since these are peas, they don't take a long time in the first place, but I do like to soak them. Soaking can improve the texture of the beans. You may result in fewer splits or bursts while cooking. We don't mind that. And with peas, you don't necessarily normally have to soak them, but I like to because soaking can remove up to 90% of the oligosaccharides. <laughs> and I'm not sure, I'm probably butchering that, but those are the sugars that are hard to digest and which causes so much discomfort and bloating in this gut. So I like to soak my beans and my peas. And so I'm going to soak them and rinse them and, I, and that's when I will cook them. So definitely, I definitely want you guys to know if you plan properly in ahead, you will not run into many problems. Now, of course, we can't plan our entire lives. Let's keep that in mind that planning is vital to being good stewards and investing our limited time and energy well, especially if we really desire our lives to make much of God. But remember what Proverbs 27 1 states. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Don't allow anything to go to waste. I reuse my onion skins, and you'll see me take off the outer layers, for bone broths. I add it to any type of bone broth, veggie, seafood, or beef, or chicken. And I make my own broths. I get a lot much more volume out of it for what I spend. I usually keep my ends of all my vegetables and also the skins. And I'll put them in the freezer until I'm ready to make a batch of bone broth. I am going to start off by putting these peas into the crock pot for a good eight hours and that'll just get them going for me because I still will be cooking them in batches again after that. But to the beginning, we will be eating it as a side dish and what I plan actually is for, you know, to make soups with half of the batch 
and I'm going to use some of it for quesadillas. My family, my kids love it. And um, also going to possibly use some for burritos. And I also plan to just use some of this as a side. And for the soup, we can just add some chopped carrots and celery is all I do. I add a few bay leaves and I add some chicken broth or veggie broth, whatever broth you desire. And I'll put that in the in a large pot on the stove and boil it. And now it's mostly cooked most of the way. You can freeze it, which is what I plan to do for the soup is I plan to freeze half of this batch once it's cooled in the fridge overnight. The next day I plan to bag half of this into the freezer and use it for those purposes. For the amount that we're keeping out, I will use it for variable things. It could be a lunch, it can be anything, especially if I'm using it for quesadillas, like beans and rice, peas and rice with a little bit of cheese, um, and I'll add it in there for that. So do not waste anything. We're definitely wanting to save here. And the way I cut the sausage is in a manner to make sure everyone gets a actual bite out of every dish. I cut it very thinly and sometimes I even half in it after that or quarter it. And that will give me leftovers, which I can use some extra for breakfasts or I can use it for anything pretty much like lunch. So I can do a stuffed bread with it which is like a breakfast dish that we do down south. And I can add the sausage with some uh, cheese and seasoning and, and it tastes really great. So if you do get a chance to learn how to do your own bread cooking, you can make so many different variations of meals and help your budget stretch. Here is the chicken and it's all done. I baked it and I, it is perfect. And here we go. We have finished the black eyed peas and sausage. And there, I'm fixing that, preparing it for my husband. I have sourdough starter here and I'm gonna take that out. This is my warm spot in the kitchen and I'm going to let it rise because I will be doing more sourdough bread and the kids would like some sourdough cinnamon rolls for this particular week and so I'm going to do that as well and I use the sprouted wheat my family seems to do so much better with digestion on that and guys just use whatever works for you we still use some of the unbleached flour as well from King Arthur and it works out just fine sometimes I half in it up I may do half of the sprouted wheat and half with regular flour and we seem to do pretty well with that and um, I'm not milling my grain at the moment I do have wheat berries but I do want to get a large bag of sprouted wheat berries and that's kind of expensive so I'm just saving up for that one day um, hopefully soon and I definitely would recommend you guys um, trying out making your own breads. I have so many recipes where I've created the sourdough bread on my channel. And if you guys just look for that, you will find it. And um, I would suggest giving it a try. It's really not difficult to make. Whether it's turning leftover chicken into a casserole or taking our extra veggies and making it a stir fry, there are endless possibilities, including baking bread. Remember Proverbs 6, 6-8 tells us, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers its food at harvest. There is nothing better than baked bread or baked goods in the kitchen. It smells so divine. My daughter is helping me out here while I continue to chop up the rest of the onions and the poblano peppers and I'm going to freeze that. I'm going to pre-chop them so they're already prepared for me for anything I need to use it for later on and I put them in the freezer. 
So my daughter's preparing the cinnamon roll dough that will be rolling out soon and setting it up for making cinnamon rolls. Those are sourdough cinnamon rolls and uh, pretty much make a lot of things out of the sourdough. It is very convenient. So if you have a chance to use it, you can, but there are also plenty of recipes that do not have sourdough, but just has yeast involved. So definitely give it a try. It is very reasonable and you will save a ton of money in the long run. So I definitely know that things that are packaged, pre-packaged and processed is not good for our health. I've recently gone primarily plant-based I do eat eggs, meat, um, I eat eggs and fish, and I sometimes eat cheeses sporadically, but I do primarily eat plant-based, and I feel a ton better. I am not sure what's going on with our foods these days, but uh, believe me when I tell you to start growing your own fruits and vegetables, whatever you can, start small, it is very vital these days, I think, because it is important to have some sort of the foods that keeps on giving and it just gives you so much more compared to what you actually spend in the grocery store. I had asked my mom a question recently and I wanted to know, did you guys, I asked her, <laughs> did you guys actually eat a lot of meat growing up? Did everyone have a, a their own farm? Because I, my family, um, someone in the family had a farm and they would work the farm and the crops and they would make a profit from it. And I just wanted to know, based on all of that work and effort, and this is like before school, them getting up to do that, and I just wanted to know. And um, she said they ate meat sometimes. Um, they ate meat sometimes once a day, sometimes twice a day, and they ate eggs sometimes. It was not something that they ate a lot of uh, frequently, but they did eat it, and it wasn't as much as we do today, which I think is what we've lost along the way. We don't eat as much fruits and vegetables which are grown because she did mention everyone had their own garden. That was just something they had. Not everyone had a farm, but everyone definitely had their own backyard garden. And they ate a lot of what they grew. And that's something that we're totally missing out and not doing, which is why I think there are so many health problems going on and so many dis overweight, so many people are having trouble and digestion issues and um, we have infertility and going on in the world and so much is going on and it's quite just unsettling to think about. So thankfully we have the Lord who we can count on and trust in these situations. From my actual health, I've prayed about this for quite a while and I've known for some time that that was one of the answers I've gotten aside from you know the fasting in the beginning and then eventually being plant-based the one answer i haven't gotten an answer to yet was is this permanent am i always going to be this having to eat this way but um being primarily eating the eggs the fish and cheese sporadically i feel great and I am fine with that. <laughs> That's what it takes for me to feel um, so much better. I am going to just stick with it as long as I can and uh, pray for strength and see what the Lord gives me. Because if my body craves something, then I'm going to try the plant-based version of it. Like for instance, if I'm craving iron, most of the vitamins and minerals comes from plants. I will eat more leafy dark leafy greens and I do eat a ton of it now and I also juice it and blend it as smoothies but yeah I will try that route first and then I will go to the other route if necessary but at the moment I feel great I feel really good and I am very confident in it as well my family is so supportive 
they knew what I was going through um, and how my health was, and I just was not myself. So praise the Lord for his answer. It's really hard when he gives you an answer and it's not what you want to hear, (laughs) but it is your answer and it's just being obedient to it. You know, he is given the answer to a prayer and I mean, it was just amazing how it was, how it happened and how he (laughs) gave me that answer. And I've known that it is not easy. It wasn't easy for me to transition, but the juicing was a primarily the biggest help and I knew I was going to have to do that um, sort of fast and I was just not willing I didn't have the energy to do it earlier on when I prayed for wisdom and got an answer on it I just waited and I needed strength in order to get it accomplished so if you guys are having any health problems I would say definitely go before the Lord And um, go before him with everything you're dealing with, anything, every single thing, you can count on him to help you. So I am definitely going to continue this way of eating. And I pray that you guys are healthy and well, because it's so vital to have so much energy for the work we have to do. We have to be with our families and We have to be there, and it's not great when you're not feeling well, and it's just a blessing. So, guys, I am just prepping this cinnamon rolls for the family, and I'm going to let them enjoy a few pieces, and we'll try to save some for the weekend if we can. Usually, this is like a great Saturday morning type of, you know, snack or treat, and it's just something to look forward to the smell is amazing once it's baking in the oven and there are so many goodies you can make my daughter loves to bake she has had her little business and she uh, accepts cupcake orders and all kinds of orders for cookies and cupcakes and she makes a really great profit especially around the autumn time that's coming up and it's just been a blessing to our family that she is learning to manage her money and um, take care of her business ethic and my son is adorable he'll go and knock on homes with a few of his friends in the neighborhood of course people we know only and um, offer to pull their weeds for whatever they can afford to pay them and it's really cute how they go around to just those we know we've already told they're on their way or they know that um, they're going to come over and it's usually around the season when the weeds are getting out of hand and it's not too hot outside for them to make a bit of a profit so both of my kids have some sort of business ethic and it's just really great to watch them and their planning and also saving their money and being wise with it it's just awesome i really enjoy it okay you guys there you have it look at this this is the cinnamon rolls they're done the house smells amazing i love them i can't have too many though (laughs) I will just have like maybe a decaf coffee and just a little piece of these is all I need and just to try because I do not need to eat all of it. Everything in moderation is fine and I know I will enjoy just a little bit of this and it's just so great to have fun baking with my daughter. It's just a real cute blessing to see her learn all these things here i have some of the tuna that i'm preparing for tuna salad and it's for the family to eat for lunches for the week we can have some of these and i will use the fresh bread that i baked and there you have it a week's worth of meals for a family of eight all for under forty dollars now i did not show you guys the soups that i'll make or the quesadillas but you get the gist of the beans and the peas, the black eyed peas that I used. So not only have we saved money, but we've also invested our time wisely. Proverbs 13, 11 reminds us, dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. 
By saving a little here and there, we can make a significant impact over time. Whether it's in our finances, our home, or our time, wisdom and diligence are the keys to success. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, being wise with our resources is not just about saving money. It is about being good stewards of what we've been given.